What I'd like to do in this video is show you how to get Java and IntelliJ IDEA installed on a Windows machine that has neither of those installed yet. So what I'm going to show you here is a Windows machine. This is Windows 10. And if I go on this computer and look at the C drive, and I look under Program Files, you'll notice that there's no Java folder here. Now, if I go and look at Program Files x86, there's no Java file or directory here either. So that tells me that Java is not installed on this machine. So I opened up Firefox, and I went up to the search bar, and I typed in Java Downloads, and this is what it gives me. And I'm going to select the first link. And I'm going to select the Java SE download, as you see right here on the left, Java Platform. And I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And I'm running Windows. Now, I have a 64-bit version of Windows. And I could therefore choose either one of these. If you're not sure which one to choose, go for the x86 version. If you know that you have 64-bit Windows, then choose x64, but you can't ever go wrong with x86. I know I have a 64-bit version of Windows, so I'm going to select the second one. And it says you have to accept the license before you download it, so you have to click this little accept license agreement box, and then you can click it. And it's going to save this file, and in my case, it's saving it to my desktop. And as you can see here on the left, it's going to appear over there. And so my browser is set up to show the download progress here at the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and wait for that to complete. And then I'll go ahead and install Java. Meanwhile, I headed over to the JetBrains website. And I selected IDEs and IntelliJ IDEA. And then I just simply clicked on download and I downloaded the ultimate edition. As a student, you can download either one. It's probably the most convenient for you to just choose community because it's a much smaller download. But I chose the ultimate version. And I've already downloaded it. The setup file is already sitting on my desktop over here to the left. So I haven't installed it yet. This is just the setup file for IntelliJ IDEA. Now this is completing. And as you can see on the left here, I now have my Java installation and my IDEA installation. So I'm going to close the browser. And I'm going to start by installing the JDK. So I'm going to double click that. And I'm going to just jump through all the hoops. I'm not going to change any defaults. Notice, by the way, the location of this Java engine is going to be placed in the C drive under Program Files, and then Java. And then under that, we have our JDK folder. This path will become important when we open up IntelliJ IDEA for the first time. So just keep this path in mind, and we'll come back and, and actually need to go to that location in a little bit. For now, I'm just going to click Next and let it do the installation for me. OK. so. The setup completes and Java has been successfully installed. So I'm going to click at this point the close button. I'm not going to bother with the next steps. And now if I go to my program files folder again, like I did before, now you'll see a Java folder here. And if you go into it, you'll see a JDK and a JRE. JDK is Java Development Kit, 
JRE is Java Runtime Engine. And we won't get into the differences between them right now, but suffice it to say, you should see a couple of folders be put into this location here. If you only see one, it's not the end of the world, but usually you'll see two. So my next step then is going to be to come over here and install IntelliJ IDEA. So I'm going to double click that executable there and begin the installation process for IntelliJ IDEA. And again, I'll accept all the defaults here. So at this point, IntelliJ IDEA has been installed. And I'm going to select Run IntelliJ IDEA so we can just launch right into it. Now, when it comes up initially, it will ask you if you want to import settings from a previous version. I'm going to just say that I don't have a previous version. And then the next thing it's going to do is prompt you for one of several things, either an activation code, a licensed server, or a JetBrains account. Now I set up a JetBrains account as a teacher, and you can also do this as a student, and that gives you access to all of their software for free. If you haven't done that, you can just click Evaluate for free for 30 days. But since I have a, a JetBrains account, I'm going to go ahead and, and put that in here. And then what will happen is it will ask you for a color scheme. And I personally like the, the dark uh, theme. It seems to just be a little easier on my eyes after a lot of viewing. So I'm going to select Darkula. And then I'm going to click Next and look at all of these default plugins. And I'm just going to leave this alone. When it comes to feature plugins, I'm not going to bother with any of this. And I'm just going to go directly to start using the product. And after a few seconds of seeing this splash screen here, it should open up for us. So every time that you want to build a Java application, you can create a new project for it. That's probably your best and safest bet. So I'm going to select that. And what you'll notice is that the project SDK will come up and it will say none here. So we need to fix that. And if you drop it down, nothing appears beneath it. So what we want to do is select the new button. And we want to set up our JDK. With that little green plus sign is, I'm going to click that. And you'll notice that it points us at a location here, but we're not going to use that location. Instead, what we're going to do is switch over into my program files folder. And you remember we talked about this earlier, and I said remember the path where Java is being installed because it's under program files, Java. And then I'm going to select JDK 1.8.0 underscore 65. And I'm going to click OK on that. And then what it's going to do is it's going to say up here 1.8. So it's, it's picking up on the fact that I have Java 1.8. Once I've done that, I don't want to select any additional libraries or frameworks. So I'm going to click Next. This is just telling me what's going to happen. So I'll click Next. Now at this point, you have to name your project. The name of your project is typically going to be something like Assignment 1 or uh, you know, Chapter 1 Assignment or whatever. you know. But for this particular case, I'm just playing around here. So I'm just going to type in uh, Sandbox 1. Notice the location of the project folder. It's putting it into a folder called idea projects in the users folder under my account. 
keep in mind the location of this project folder because when it comes time to submit your assignment you're going to want to go in here to get the source code but for now I'm going to click finish and what it's going to do next is it's going to other than putting a tip on the screen which I'll close it's going to create my project now what I typically like to do is, is to, I like to put a panel up on the left side that shows me all of my project files. To do that, you can go to the lower left corner and you can click here and select project. And you can take and move this over a bit, but if I expand Sandbox 1, you'll notice there's a folder here called SRC. So to create a Java file, what you're going to want to do here is right click on that folder, select new, and then select Java class. At this point, the name you give this class is significant. The assignment will typically tell you what to name your class. So for instance, if we're building you know, a, a chess program, the assignment may say create a Java class named chess. And that's what I'm doing by typing that in. And I want to click OK it's going to create for me this starting point uh, class file. Now, one of the cool things about IntelliJ is it's your ability to customize the environment. One of the things I typically like to do right off the bat is to click on File and Settings. And I like to go under uh, Editor, Colors and Fonts. font and I want to take this Darkula scheme and make a copy of it. So I'm going to call it Darkula TK for my initials there and save it. That enables me to modify the color scheme and fonts. So I'm going to take my primary font and change it from monospaced to another font that I like which is called Source Code Pro. And bump up the font to 14 and set my line spacing to 1.1. And this is this is purely cosmetic. So don't worry too much about having you don't have to do this obviously. But if you do want to play around with the, the colors and fonts, there's all kinds of things you can do in this settings window. And as you can see it looks a little nicer now. So what I'm going to do next is create my main method, and I'm going to print out here, hello world. Now to run this program, the first time you do run this, you have to go and right click on your class over here and select run chess.main. And the status shows up down at the bottom, and, and of course, once it starts to run, you, you might get stuff like this coming up initially. Once you do these things once, they'll, they won't come up and bother you again. But at any rate, the program runs, as you can see here. And from here on out, if I want to run it again, say I add another line here, I don't have to right click on this. I can just come up to the right corner and click the little green button to run the program. Now, those are the basics right, of, of building an app. Let's say that I, I write, write a program. I'm happy with it. I'm ready to submit it for an assignment. What you will do is you'll go out to Windows Explorer open up your C drive, go to users, your account folder, and then you'll go down to your idea projects folder and inside of that will be your project folder and inside of that will be a source folder and inside of that will be your Java file. This is the file you would submit to me in Blackboard when it comes time to turn in your work. The next time you do an assignment you may have another project folder and inside of that you may have another file to submit. But for now, that's how you get to the files to submit for your 
work to be graded. Now, in closing, this seems like a lot of work to do all of this. I understand that, but once you've done it a couple times, it's very quick and very simple. Within 10, 20 seconds, you're set up and ready to go. So it, it isn't as difficult and time consuming as it seems. Once you have everything all set up, it, it goes pretty fast. IntelliJ IDEA is a very powerful editing tool. Lots of features in it. And we're not gonna get into all of that in this video, but I just wanted you to know that you're installing something very powerful that would serve you very well as a professional developer for any kind of software development with Java. So with that, I'm going to close this video out. I hope you find this helpful, and we'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.